Hey guys, Blazin here. Welcome to my analysis on the T-51 DERI. The T-51 DERI, which stands for Type 51 Directed Energy Rifle Improved, is a plasma-based directed energy weapon used by the Covenant, issued to elites as well as brutes, and is made by Iru Iru Armory. This weapon was relatively new to the Covenant during the fall of Reach. The T-51 DERI resembles the T-25 DER in shape, though with an elongated midsection. The middle of the weapon features a revolving cylinder which slowly ramps up its rate of fire over time, starting with lower rates and accelerating to an extremely high rate of fire in a short period of time. Unlike its forebears, the T-51 DERI features a manual venting trigger that allows its operator to release thermal buildup, dispersing it through shuttered ports on the sides of the weapon. This allows the operator more control over the weapon, at the cost of the tr traditional format which dominated most of the Covenant's history. The T-51 DERI was a designed improvement over the venerable T-25 DER. As one of the many efforts done by Covenant manufacturers in an attempt to improve performance over the T25 DER, the results were generally mixed. The trademarks on this weapon features what I think is a foreigner glyph right above where the cheek rest would be, kind of. Alright, next to that is a traditional Covenant symbol. Just above the trigger mechanism is another series of four Covenant symbols. At the bottom of the weapon looks like to be another Forerunner Glyph. Right next to that is another Covenant symbol. I've also noticed that there are more Covenant trademarks located on the rotating cylinder itself. On the side of the cooling panels is another Covenant symbol. And lastly, all the way in the front of the gun is another Covenant symbol. The T-51 DERI features a stock? Would you call this a stock? I don't think so. I don't think this stock, so to speak, has really much of a use. In fact, I would think it's more in the way than any of use. Moving a bit below that is a thick-ass trigger. And across from that is a huge pad that is used to vent the heat. Right next to that is the rotating cylinder. And right above that is where you can see the huge heat meter along with a huge venting system. Not only does this weapon feature the side panels like the T-25 DER, which are elongated, but the T-51 DERI features a huge venting mechanism that rises up and take up basically the whole top of the gun. It's massive. Much like the T-51 DERI's cousin, the T-25 DER, this weapon features no sights either. Moving on to in-game stats, the battery units I was able to fire was about 44 plasma bolts. I got this number from the first shot I fired to the point where the game tells me to vent, which resulted around 44 shots. The reserve energy is 100% and every two shots consumes about 1% of the battery. The average fire rate I got was around 620 rounds per minute. Getting the cooldown speed was a bit complicated since I have to manually cool down the weapon myself. So the way how I'm going to do this is the cooldown speed when you don't vent the heat manually was a total of 11.2 seconds. And I guess the tactical cooldown speed, if I could call it that, was around 2.15 seconds. Once again, I got this number when I fire the first shot to the point where the game tells me to vent the gun. Because if I keep holding the trigger past that, the gun's rate of fire will slow down, rendering it useless in a real gunfight. Mm -hmm. 
max effective range I got was around 23.01 meters. The damage output I was able to get was 11 shots to break shields and 6 shots to health, totaling a 17 shot kill, on average. I have more to say on shots to kill that I'll save at the, towards the end of the video. Strike. Lastly, the TTK I got, if all shots land perfectly, is 1.66 seconds. Alright, that's everything you need to know about the plasma repeater. While I think it's a cool alien gun, I think it falls short in terms of gameplay. The plasma repeater was meant to replace the plasma rifle, and I think the plasma rifle only came back for the campaign, and Bungie really didn't do anything to make the two full auto plasma weapons different. In my opinion, I think the plasma rifle should have been kept to be the more direct equivalent to the assault rifle, while the plasma repeater, honestly, I think it should have been the SMG of the game, since there is no SMG in Halo Reach. I'd ramp up its rate of fire a bit more, color it red, and make it brute exclusive weapon, as a sort of nod to Halo 2's brute plasma rifle, and maybe make it around a 20 shot kill. That way the spiker is still the AR for the brutes, plus they'll have a red plasma repeater as their SMG, while the elites get to keep their more traditional plasma rifle. It also doesn't make sense that the plasma repeater, which has bloom, has more range than the plasma rifle, which doesn't have bloom. Something else I should mention is some of the damage output when it came to the automatic weapons is a bit inconsistent. Examples are the assault rifle tends to be a 19 shot kill, but sometimes it's 18. The plasma rifle tends to be a 16 shot kill, but sometimes it's a whopping 11. The plasma repeater usually a 17 shot kill, but sometimes it's 19. So there's something weird going on within the game's code or some numbers are fucked, and maybe Bungie just didn't bother to correct them or forgot. I think only modders right now might know the answer, but I wanted to mention that in case you guys decide to test them for yourselves. Alright, that's everything. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed, share this video with your friends, subscribe for more Halo Reach weapon analysis and other first person shooter content. I also like fighting games and survival horror games. I'm trying to reach 1000 subscribers this year, but hey, if you don't subscribe, that's cool. At least hit the like button on your way out. And until next time, peace.